Um, my name is Rita. I'm here with the Hotels Network. For those of you that don't know us, we are a tech company for hotels, uh, specializing in uh, conversion and personalization and helping the hotels improve direct bookings. Um, we, have been, we work with around more than 3,000 hotels now, spread over 50 countries, and I'm Portuguese, actually, after the Italian and Spanish, now the Portuguese, but I'm based on the Barcelona head office. Today I'm going to talk about predictive personalization, um, why is it important, and why using machine learning can help you drive more direct bookings. So today we have a lot of interesting uh, talks here, and most of them talk about personalization. Um, I believe it was also um, Mr. Tarek from Four Seasons uh, talking a lot about how important it is as well to differentiate yourself um, as a brand. And this is actually the concern and the focus of the CEOs of the main companies in terms of hospitality and travel. Um, I want to talk about three types of personalization. The most common one, and some examples were given here, was about the unique user experience, how to create this tailor-made experience. But actually, we, have, uh, we see a lot of growth in terms of the exclusivity, the mixture type of personalization. The fact that I tell you that you cannot have something that makes you want it even more. And then, last but not the least, the extreme personalization. This is the type of personalization that is so is exaggerated that is almost unrealistic but that is possible due to today's technologies. So I brought some examples today, and let's move away a little bit from hotels so that we have a little bit of break. Um, so this, I think, is one of the world's most famous brand, Coca-Cola. And they did this machine. I don't know if you have it here. I never saw it in Spain, but for example, in the US, you'll find this machine that basically allow you to hand select your drink and build your own drink. So you can really tailor-made and personalize your beverage depending on the level of gas that you want on the beverage, depending on the flavors that you want to mix. They basically deconstructed one product in order to create dozens of other products. What this allows them is to fulfill the needs of very small target groups. All right? um, obviously, a restaurant cannot have um, Coca-Colas with different type of gas or with different mix of flavors because it's basically just not profitable. Uh, but with this machine, the choices that they can get for very small and specific targets is quite wide. Another example, and I'm sure as well you all know this brand, the Starbucks. So Starbucks has, and now I'm talking about mystery, uh, hidden, exclusivity, uh, exclusivity um, personalization. So there is this buzz around the secret menu of Starbucks. Everybody talks about it. Social media is going nuts about it. Um, a lot of marketing uh, around this idea. But what is funny about this, this is not real. This doesn't actually exist, the secret menu. This was totally fans created. Everybody, you can actually go to Starbucks and create your own beverage. But it was actually the, the buzz and the talk about the fans that create this huge, um, well, buzz, I don't want to repeat that word a lot, but around this idea of the secret menu of Starbucks. And another example, and it's actually my favorite, I'm a, a fan of, of Spotify, probably most of you know it and maybe even use it, normal version of premium. And here I'm talking about the extreme personalization. The fact that now you have, with this um, app, uh, weekly or monthly selection of the, suggestion, the suggestions, music that you like the most. And I don't know about you, but they nail it every time with me. So it's really music that I really like. It's really the top uh, recommendation they could do for me every week or every month. Um, and before, with radio, do you still remember that, radio? So they used to have this top 20 or top 40 uh, songs as well. But every single one of us will hear the same top 20 or top 40 songs if we connect to the same radio. So here, what they are doing, and they are able to do that due to machine learning, is the fact that every single one of us will have a dip different um, list, different suggestions, because we have different tastes, right? 
and they are doing it this very well. And we do the same, but for hotels. The last example, I, I think this is the one that we can compare more as hoteliers, um, is Nike, or Nike, I never know how to pronounce this one. So Nike actually create this Nike ID um, service. This is, um, basically you can go to their website and customize your gear entirely in terms of color, design, the features that you like to have it. You have to pay $170 to have that option of personalization, but this is the perfect example that actually customers are willing to pay more for personalization. Nike, the same as a hotel, when they sell through a retailer, they have to, to sell with a wholesale price because the reseller has to have a profit by selling their shoes in their stores. What happened is that by using this direct-to-consumer strategy they adopted with Nike ID, uh, the idea was to increase the growth uh, of the company, the profits, and on the last quarter, um, actually, they increased the direct-to-consumer channel on their sales mix, um, and this was 22% of their total revenue, a direct sale through personalization. I think it's pretty awesome. Okay, now bringing this more to the focus here, to hotels, to what we do. Um, basically, we find patterns on the hotel's direct website and use those patterns that a person, humanly, you cannot find yourself manually, but we use those patterns to um, show them to the customer the right content, completely customized, depending on their needs. Um, this is done with a two-step process. First, we have to apply machine learning to uh, understand the user behavior. And the second step is to personalize the guest, the user experience on your hotel website and in on your booking engine as well, through the right content and the right offers, obviously, with the nicest pop-ups as well. So we talk about this as well um, here today. Um, and I wanted to, to, to say again, there is sometimes this mistake from hoteliers to think that the fact that you are offering the typical strawberry chocolates um, and champagne to the honeymooners or the cocktail at arrival, you are already personalizing their experience. And you maybe are, but only in one of the steps on the guest journey, on the stay. What we are suggesting here is for you to also do the same on the booking um, step, on the booking process. So how we do that? So our data scientists back in Barcelona, they developed this really amazing algorithm by studying the behavior of millions of users in different websites, different designs, different booking engines, and with hundreds of variables. And to give you a little bit more information on a little bit of the variables or the three main focus is what was the user doing before he went to your website? Where is he coming from? Is he coming from Google? Is he coming from a Facebook campaign that you are doing? The Instagram uh, nice post that you did? Then what is he doing while he's on your website? Where is he going? How much time is he spending on each page? Where is he clicking? So on, so on. And then the third is all the unique data that we have thanks to our core business, actually, that I'm not speaking here, but our conversion tools that are on the hotel's website and allow us to have a lot of important information. For example, which offers are you showing to that guest? Which are your review scores compared to the other review scores of other hotels in the area? Are you in parity? So with our price comparison, what is the difference between your price and the OTA's price for that exact search? And a lot of unique data that we have that allow us to build this algorithm and to predict the likelihood of the user to book or not during that visit. So what we can do um, is to predict if that user is a low intent user or a high intent user and adapt the content that you show to them based on that. So why is this a game changer? Because we are going, we are moving away from the traditional revenue management where you set a price per room for a specific date. And I'm not going to talk more about revenue management because we had a lot of this here today. But what we are doing here is that we are adding the user to this equation for the first time, all right? And the problem is that traditional hotel websites, they are exactly the same to every single user. So I go to 
your website or another of us goes and you are going to show me exactly the same static environment with the same offers, the same information, the same colors, the same everything. So with predictive analytics, every user is different and you adapt what you show to this user based on his behavior, his needs and what he wants. I'm going to give you two examples now uh, in hotels, not anymore Coca-Cola and so on. So the example is, and the purpose is, to focus on the low intent users, those users that our algorithm predict that they have a very low conversion likelihood, and only to that user you are going to show him an offer, showing him uh, attractive benefit that will convince him to book and stay with you. However, you don't have to show that offer to everybody else, because we don't want to cannibalize your sales from users that will probably be willing to pay more for that room. You only show that to the users that actually need to see the offer in order to complete the booking. And then, and I'm going to use one of the questions, and this is funny, that was done to Manfred, to Oracle, and actually the name of this product is Oraculo, so it's funny that we can solve that question, which was, how can you, um, upsell or cross-sell other features, the spa, the restaurant, and so on. It was actually during the stay, I believe, the question, but here we are proposing during the booking process. So for all the high intent users, those users that has a high probability of booking, what you can do is to show a content inviting him to book a higher room category, to do um, an upgrade at an extra cost, but that user that is a high value user, he will be interested at, or just cross-sell. Invite him to, to, to add a dinner or add a spa treatment to his res uh, reservation. So not only this will help to increase as well the conversion for the high intent users, but will also increase your ADR, which is extremely important. And just to summarize, and the Portuguese has saved more time than the Spanish. I'm kidding. Um, personalizing without predicting behavior is not efficient. It's extremely important to personalize, but we have also the sweet spot actually is when you can use machine learning, uh, use um, the data that everybody's been talking here today to make sure that you are showing the right offer to the right customer at the right time and also with the right tools that can uh, be adaptable to your hotel, obviously beautiful, in line with your brand standards, with everything. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Vita. It's been great.